Hello, and welcome along to this little tutorial where I'm going to be talking through an example of a risk analysis um, using BPMN, DMN, and a little AI. Um, the idea here is that um, we take a bunch of financial information through a, a form, and then we uh, run some DMN table rules over to find out how risky this person, based on their financial information, it would be to invest and give insurance to or something. Now, there are three possible outcomes. The first is they're accepted. Second is they're rejected. But the most interesting one is that we don't really have an idea yet um, one way or another, in which case we need to give it to an analyst to review. Um, and that's interesting because in a lot of cases, we don't want the analyst to know the rules and what's being violated because those rules are kind of secret. Instead, we want to give the analyst just the financial information and some basic ideas of how to approach uh, the investigation and hopefully that might work. So that's the use case here. Um, I'll talk through all the aspects of the model um, and um, uh, and the DMN and the forums and we'll talk through how it was all implemented and hopefully it'll inspire you to um, do something similar and use a similar pattern. So let's get started. Now, I have all of this in my Commander um, uh, SAS uh, organization, and uh, you can too, because I also have it in a GitHub rep repository that is linked below. So if you want to follow along, you can do that. Um, in this, it's got a process application called Risk Analysis, um, which contains all the elements that we need to actually run this. Uh, we have the Risk Analysis process model, we have their DMN table, we have some forms. So let's start in our model. So. Um, I'm not going to go through the implementation right now. I'm just going to go through the BPMN, and when we're completely finished uh, going through all the different aspects, we'll then talk about uh, how it was all implemented. So let's talk about this from, from a BPMN perspective. So the first thing is that we have um, uh, a start event. This contains a form, so we start with um, uh, financial information being given. And then what will happen is that information is put through some rules some BPMN rules tables, which are then fed into uh, ChatGPT. Um, the rules that are responded to, the idea here is that those rules will give us back some information, a score to indicate how risky it might be, but also um, um, a natural language description of the various um, flags that it hit. What this is going to do is it's going to summarize those flags into a very easy readable thing. So now we have two variables running. We have a score for the risk and we have uh, a natural language description of what's going on. So the next phase is we're going to look into um, the uh, what could happen next. We could have a low risk. So if it's a, this XOR gateway uses that score, in some cases it might say, oh, that's a, a, not a very risky one at all. So we're going to send that straight to low risk and accept immediately which will be great fun. Uh, the second option, of course, is high risk, in which it'll be rejected. And the one we're most interested in is um, anything that isn't too low or too high, in which case we go right here to the investigation section. This is where the user will see the financial details, but also see um, the, the, the summary of what they should look into. And then they have the option to choose either to reject or to accept. So. If everything's fine, it'll go up here. Okay, so that's the BPMN model. And the interesting part about this, of course, is the DMN table. What are these rules? How do they work? And we'll first talk about the DMN table, and then we'll talk about how it's integrated. Now, the DMN table is given some data, and uh, that data is uh, from the start form. We can actually check out the start form right here. It's called, let's open it in the editor, in fact. Um, and so we can take a look at what sort of data we're expecting. Um, the star form is um, a, called Welcome to Hawk Risk Analysis. So that's what our, our custom is. We, have, we need a name, we need an email address, date of birth, and we need last year's income, this year's income, and some current assets, uh, maybe a boat and a car, who knows, and a bunch of other things. What any big purchases that happened? This is all just a bit of fun. Um, and then we get all this data that gets sent to the DMN table into the process. So let's take a look now at the DMN table. So if I go in here to run risk analysis rules, this is our DMN table. If you're not familiar with DMN, it stands for Decision Model and Notation. And it basically is um, created by the same folks who built BPMN. And it lets you uh, create human readable, executable uh, rules. 
And so in this, we have our various uh, inputs that are around here, and we have the rules table itself. So let's click in here. So I made this rules table relatively complicated in the sense that I wanted it to be not too trivial. Um, it does actually fall into a very common pattern, and I'll discuss that. The most important thing is, we'll start at the very top, with the hip policy. The hip policy donate, uh, um, is a description of how many rules are returned. So most folks will build one with a first, which means the first rule that hits in order um, should be returned. But for this, we are going to use collect because what this table is, is a every row represents a, a red flag that we consider as part of this analyst. So we've still got the first one. If your income is below a certain amount, um, on uh, last year, and it's also below or equal to uh, another amount this year, and you bought a home and you already have a home, you see home in purchases and home in assets, um, then we're saying purchase a secondary home on low income and we give a score of 40. Now, what does that mean? Well, not much on its own because one of the other key aspects here is that we're going to collect all the red flags and we're going to then add up all the scores okay so for instance if you just bought a home 40 is a relatively low score you're probably fine but if you did that plus something else perhaps that might trigger things so you see that the uh, we take in last year's income this year's income large purchases and existing assets and um, we have a bunch of different rules around it like the one I just mentioned um, we also have that um, if we have something in other something non-specified in purchases you'll see that um, this is saying that that's only 20 points that's relatively low it's something that might be a bit weird but probably by itself it's fine but when combined with other things it might be a problem so that's our, 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 our DMN table. And now I want to talk about how um, this DMN table is actually implemented within the BPMN model. So for that, we'll go back to um, our, um, uh, our uh, little application here and go to the BPMN model. So I'm back in my model now and I want to focus on uh, the business rules task here. The business rules task um, can be implemented in lots of ways. We can see here that this implementation is based on decision table. And what I did here was pretty straightforward. I clicked on link decision and I selected the business rules um, as a DMN table that I have in the process application. So that meant it automatically linked the two of them. They're still versioned independently, but now in runtime, it'll call that DMN table. So that's pretty cool. The next thing I did was I added the variables to a risk results. Now, a really interesting thing to know is that we have a, um, the variable that gets output is a series of rules that matched, one or more rules that matched. And um, with those, I put them all into a, one big variable called uh, results. Now, every rule has two outputs, a description of the flag, that's a problem, and then a score. So to create two distinct variables, I used the output here to say the risk rating is the sum Oops, risk rating is the sum of all the scores in risk results. Makes sense? Um, so all the, all the scores added together gives you the total risk rating. And the second one here is I grab all of the, um, the human readable descriptions of the flags and I put those into a variable called risk descriptions. I do that by using a feel to join all of the descriptions together and adding a comma between them. So then I have a comma separated list of all the things that were risky. So that's the first thing that happens. So that means our DMN table finishes with a score, a variable called risk rating, and a description of what's wrong, which is risk descriptions. Um, now they're quite disconnected, right? Because they're all sort of very independent uh, from each other. So what I then do is I use a ChatGPT connector. So this is part of uh, Command SAS, and I contact ChatGPT and I send a prompt. And that prompt says, um, someone has submitted their financial details for risk um, assessment, write a summary of the findings. And then I put all of the, um, the findings that we had from the rules table. And I also say with a detailed suggestion of potential actions for further investigation. So um, this then will give back uh, a summary of what might be wrong uh, without specifying anything in particular. And then 
The nice thing is it also generates some suggestions on what people might do. And we put that into a variable called investigation details. Okay, so let's imagine the score um, is a certain value. We arrive at this gateway. So what do we do next? So if I click on one of the sequence flows here, you see if this risk rating is less than or equal to 40, we'll just automatically accept they're fine. We also have here, if the risk score is greater than or equal to 100, it's an automatic reject. And anything in the middle, because this is a default flow, brings us to this investigation details. So let's take a look at the uh, form here. I'll open it once more over here in the editor. So the form editor, um, it shows um, a risk score. So it'll, it'll have the risk score already. So that might be something like, uh, well, it won't be 20. It'll actually always be over 40. So let's make it 41. And we have a little traffic light thing here that shows the risk score. We have a final decision that the user must write. And um, we also have um, uh, the details that were given in from the, uh, uh, fr from the person's uh, risk stuff. And they need to then decide what the risk score should be. So that's how this front end works. And then depending on how they change the risk score, uh, let's come back to the diagram, it'll then decide whether we go through the next bit of the gateway, which will either um, accept or reject. See, so we have low risk or high risk. Okay, so now let's run this and see how it looks in runtime. Okay, so I'm gonna deploy this. I think I already have, but I'm gonna do it again to the newest alpha version and click deploy. You can see it's deploying like the four resources. That's the model, the DMN table, and the, um, uh, the two forms. So I'm gonna click deploy. Okay, and that's deployed, great. So now I can actually view that process in Operate. Um, so if you haven't used Operate, it's the end user tool for folks who are uh, interested in making sure the process runs correctly. So there it is, there's our, there's our, our process and we can see that there's no running processes yet. So let's start this process. I'm gonna do that by going to um, task list task list is for um, what we call process participants, people who actually take part in the process as part of the day-to-day um, the -day use, completing user tasks, start forms, that sort of thing. And there's no tasks currently, so I'm gonna to go to processes, and I think I should have risk analysis. There's risk analysis, so you can see this has a start form, so let's click on it. Great, I'm gonna add some personal information. My name is Niall, I'm gonna add my email address. Um, Cool. And then I'm going to add my date of birth, uh, which was earlier this month. Um, I'm going to put my income in as quite low, sadly, and uh, this year's income in as slightly higher. Let's go with 3,500. And then we're going to choose some assets, uh, specifically uh, some art, a little bit of art, uh, a boat, um, got a lot of boats and um, maybe a, a horse, we have a horse as well. Great, yep, I have all those things. And um, cool, and what did I purchase this year? Uh, well, uh, let's see, a home and also, um, let's say 100 NVIDIA uh, GPUs, because GPUs. Okay, and now I'm going to start the process. So process has begun and we can check that out on um, in operate so if I refresh this page we should then see that one process has started and it's probably going to have gone through okay so now the process instance has begun it ran through the rules already and it's gone to chat GPT and it's gone down here to show investigator Now, before we go into this task I want to step through each of these so let's see what rules got triggered so I select this I can go into the rules engine and now we're brought back to the DMN table we talked about we can see here that the inputs were like so with uh, with all of this stuff and we can also see what the outputs were which is here and of course here because they're highlighted so you saw that other purchase was there so that's 20 points great stuff and that my um, income is under 70,000 um, but uh, and I have a horse or a boat which one do I have I have both 
and this says income doesn't appear to support uh, upkeep of assets. So uh, this together created a score of, oh, and I also uh, sent it on time because time is very important. So this then created a score uh, uh, that ended up sending the process um, uh, back to uh, the investigator. Then what happened was we went through this summarize and we got a, a chat GPT response. And you can see all the variables here. There's the, the prompt, right? This is all the internal uh, data. And now we can see the global data. And this has some stuff, other purchase and everything else, all the variables that we've come to know and love. And then it has the risk total. Let's see what the risk was, 60. So 60 was in the middle, so it goes to the investigator. We can go back to task list now and find the, the task, which is here, which is show investigator details. And we should see here that uh, let's assign it to me. And we should see that, okay, it's a big yellow thing. Um, and we can look through and what ChatGPT said is actually put right here. So this says the financial details submitted for risk analysis show a large um, uh, unspecified purchase that has been added to the individual's expenses. The income report does not seem to support the required upkeep of assets. However, it is noted that the details were submitted at the time. Now, what's important here is that the rules are not being um, shown to the end user. Specifically, they don't know the limits of what we consider to be, uh, which assets are considered to require like more money or how much money that requires. It gives all the information to the investigator without ever actually divulging the rules. And it even gives them a hint of what to do next. Based on the findings, further investigation is recommended. This may include requesting more specific details of the large purchase and blah, 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 blah. Super handy. So I can look through this as an investigator, it's read only of course. And at the end, oh, it's a lot of GPUs, so that doesn't look good. So let's like increase this risk to like 120. Um, so uh, too many GPUs and uh, is the reason. And then I'm gonna go down and submit this task. And then the process will then hopefully then move to reject it. And um, that's me uh, rejected from this, sadly. As I mentioned, the code for all this is available um, right here on uh, GitHub, so you can check it out for yourself. Um, any questions, just let me know. Go to the forum. Um, and if there's a specific example that you think is worth investigating that uses this, these factors, please let me know. So thanks a lot for listening. See you later. Bye.